Remove power to your R22 condenser from the disconnect. Before starting the conversion, you want to do a proper recovery and vacuum. I do have a video posted on my channel. I want to keep this video short and just go straight through the conversion. I would also suggest to turn off the breaker for your condenser as well as your air handler. We do need access to remove the old EVAP coil. We have to remove our vent as well as our PVC lines. Disconnect the high side using a crescent wrench. Now we're going to cut our low side using our pipe cutters. Once you remove both of your line sets, we can go ahead and start removing the old coil. The old coil should slide right out. Now we're going to remove the frame. Now we're going to start removing our condenser. We're going to cut both our line sets with our pipe cutters. Now we're going to disassemble our elect electrical. This is our low voltage wires that we're removing. Now we're going to remove our high voltage coming from our disconnect. Again, always ensure there is no power. This is why I suggest turning the breaker off to your condenser. Once you finish removing the electrical whip, remove the condenser and put it to the side. Remove the front panel for your EVAP. Loosen the nut for your high side. Slide out the new EVAP coil and put it to the side. Dry fit your frame. You want to ensure that it fits nice and snug. It is possible that you may have to do some alterations and cut the ductwork. You really don't want any major gaps between the ductwork and the frame. Secure the ductwork to the frame. Make sure that you catch the flaps that are on the inside of the new frame for your evaporative coil. Secure the bottom of the frame as well. Once you secure all three sides, apply duct seal. This will help minimize airflow loss. Be very gentle when you're sliding in your new coil. You don't want to cause any unnecessary damage. Now we're going to put our front panels on and make sure that our frame is nice and tight. Even though I put duct seal on the inside of the duct in the frame, I do like to go over with some taping both on the top and the bottom. Cut off the end cap of your low side. Now we're going to flush both of our line sets. If you don't know how to do this, go to my channel, How to Flush Line Sets Properly. I do want to keep this video as short as possible, only showing the conversion process. Cut out your old high side fitting and prep your lines for reassembly. Clean your lines and your fittings with sandpaper. The one tip I always give new technicians regarding brazing is you always want to heat up the sides of the pipe. The silver should melt as soon as it touches the connection. Before we start brazing, you want to have all your safety material ready and available. Here I have my bucket of water and rags, my nitrogen, so when I start brazing just to keep the line sets clean, my fire extinguisher, as well as my thermal spray. Set up your tanks. Be careful when you use your torches. Only open the acetylene very slightly. While setting the pressures, I usually set my acetylene at 5 psi and my oxygen at 20. There are those who choose different pressures, but this is what I use while I'm brazing. Spray your thermal spray around the gasket for your low side. Make sure you check all your connections. You don't want to see any gaps. You want to make sure everything is nice and sealed. Don't forget to install your orifice as well as your plastic ring. When you're tightening your connection, don't over tighten it. We'll do the same process with our condensing unit. We'll dry fit all of our fittings. 
we'll clean our lines and our couplers using the sandpaper. Remove your straighter valves from both your high and your low side. You don't want it to melt while you're brazing. Spray your valves with the thermal spray. This will protect the gaskets inside from melting. You can also wrap it with a wet rag. Make sure your connections are properly sealed. Once you finish brazing, you can go ahead and start connecting the electrical. Make sure the ground is connected. Install your Schrader valves on both your high and low side. Next, you'll want to shoot your system with nitrogen and do a leak test. Again, I do have a video posted on my channel showing how to do a proper nitrogen fill and check for leaks. Once you fill it with nitrogen, you're gonna do a leak test. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the leak test on all of the connections that you made, not only at the condenser, but at the evap coil as well. Make sure that you pull a vacuum on the system. Again, I do have a video posted on my channel how to do a proper vacuum. Open your high and your low service valves. This condenser did come factory charged with 410A refrigerant. We're releasing the refrigerant into our system. Turn on the breaker and all power supply. Put in your disconnect. Set your thermostat to cool and auto. Go ahead and drop your set point below your ambient temperature. This system did come factory charged with 410A refrigerant. You may have to add refrigerant depending on whatever pressures you are trying to maintain. After charging your system to the proper pressures, make sure that you replace the plastic caps with these brass caps. I would also suggest insulating your lines at the air handler as well as at the condensing unit. If this video was a help, if it was informational, please subscribe.